It's the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. And today, I'm going to show you how I sand this floor and get it ready to start putting the top coat on. If you watched the bonus footage of yesterday's video, see how it went through and kind of scraped off some of the thicker areas. I'm going to continue with that today, scraping off the thicker areas and then give everything a sweep and then I will switch to the drum sander. starting with a 80 grit sanding belt. Do it all again with 100 grits. You are now done with the drum sander. Make sure you thoroughly clean it before you return it to the Home Depot. The next tool is the edge sander, 80 grits. Surface 
surface area is in contact with the floor, the faster it heats up. You've got to keep that thing moving. Don't focus on one spot. Just keep moving, keeping it cool. Back and forth. Don't let it overheat. Put a negative pressure in here. The exhaust fan is going right out there. So the dust that does come up, which is very little, goes outside. all over the place but that's a bad one so will this ever end will it ever be done are we just gonna work on this floor forever it may seem that way these are just the steps that you need to take to get a good finish and if you do them all they, they all add up to the normal person even to someone who's remodeled their own house especially a DIYer they're gonna come in and go Wow, this is way better than my house. And that's kind of, that's the goal that I, I try to reach. The work speaks for itself. Most of all these young customers of mine are entertainers. They have people over. They want to show off their new decor. It's quite silly if you ask me. Uh, but it is one giant competition on the interior decorating, the remodeling. I know all my friends are even remodeling. You know, sixty, eighty, hundred thousand dollar remodels. The money goes like that in a in a large kitchen remodel, especially when you remove a remove a wall, all new cabinets, all new appliances, all new floor, all new ceiling, all new electrical, all new plumbing. Easily can get up into six figures. What is this thing? This is not the drum sander. Yes, I brought another machine home. This is your buffing pad. Different colors or different firmness. And these are your sanding screens. Yes, yeah, screens. We're done with the sandpaper and we're on to, to see through screens. I got to go around the floor again. Um, we're getting real close to putting the finish on. And in fact, I will get the sealer on today. Today. It's got to be perfect. It's got to be vacuumed. It's got to be wiped down with a terry cloth towel, a wet terry cloth towel. So lots to do. Lots to do. Better get busy. Pad goes on first, then 100 grits goes on next. Make sure you pull the stickers off. This heats up, you don't want that adhesive sticking on your floor. It all just sticks together. There's no, no bolts, no nothing. It's all just gonna sandwich. That's it, just like that. I like to bring it over into a closet or a spot that isn't going to be seen because that initial startup uh, can over sand the floor in a specific spot. So it's 100 grit sanding screen. Feel it out. Oh yeah. It looks so smooth. So there is dust on the floor. 
This all has to get vacuumed. I'm going to sweep. I'm going to vacuum. There's a lot of processes. This is what that screen looks like after doing this floor. I'm still not ready. I know it's painful. When can I put the dang finish on? Oh, I got a hand screen. I'm going to use the same screen I just took off of there. And I got to go into the corners. Those places where I scraped and sanded the corners where the edger didn't get up close to the wall. I got a hand screen. And I got to start paying attention to this transition here. I'll be doing a hand screening with 100 grit. Kind of feathering it on in there. We will discuss more about that room in the future. But like these inside corners here, I gotta get down on my hands and knees. And it's good thing there's very there's not much to do in this room, but I'm hitting it up the areas. So it's all even and consistent. Even inside this silly broom closet back here, I'm hitting it up. So did we come to a, to a consensus of what that hole was? A laundry chute in the kitchen. M maybe someone said that there used to be a trash bag hanging from the ceiling in the basement and you would just throw your trash in there. That kind of makes sense because the cabinetry that was over that, it was a kitchen cabinet right there. You open the door, you could just whoop, throw your trash in. But then you'd have to go to the basement to get your trash to take it outside. I don't know. Dumb waiter, gimp. Where are you? There's some other ones that I can't really mention. They're not advertiser friendly. Keep guessing and maybe we'll have a boat. I, I honestly thought it was a laundry chute. A lot of the other suggestions make sense. concerned that I was using my customer's vacuum cleaner. So this is my personal Electrolux vacuum cleaner. Not my wife's, but mine. 3M sent this to me two or three years ago, put in a video on vacuum cleaner filters. Don't freak out, I'm using my vacuum cleaner. This is an amazing vacuum cleaner. It's got more suction than my shop vac. It's quiet. It's, it's pretty awesome. It's almost too nice to use for construction, but that's what I that's what I use it for. microfiber towel. I'm going to wipe down the entire floor surface to get that last bit of dust. Let's see how much dust is on here. Oh yeah, see all that? Actually, you can see what just a little bit of dampness does and how close those colors match. In this hand here, I have the sealer, the sanding sealer. And in this hand over here, I have the two-part top coat. And it's time to apply the sanding sealer. And then soon after, same day, time to apply the two-part top coat. You will have to tune in tomorrow to see that. Goodbye.